then last time I was here, I was a little heavier. Uh-huh. Praise the Lord. <laughs> See. <laughs> That was not the moment <laughs> to shout in a man. <laughs> you sure was. <laughs> Girl, I know I'm big. Hey, you guys, I'm Venus Monique from the hit crime drama Vindication, and you guys should definitely make sure you're catching Maurice Brown show on Roku TV. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Maurice Brown Show, breaking down the four walls with comedians and a special guest today. Our special guest today is an actress that has been in a bunch of films. You may have seen her in ATL Homicide, Amelia, Detour, The Farmer and the Bell, Saving Santa Land with our good buddy Jen Gotson, and she is also a, a steady member of the show The Christian View. With no further ado, please welcome Amy Sutherland. What's up, Amy? How are you? Hi, Maurice. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. It it's been a while since we've had you on the show. Uh that 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 I love the Christian view. Because uh-huh. you gotta have an answer for the the world, the secular world. And the Christian yeah. view is just awesome. And, and and how can fans see the Christian view? Yeah, um, well, you can go on our YouTube page, um, just dial in the, the Christian View. Also, the web page is thechristianview.tv, um, and you can find your local listing there. We do film in Atlanta, so we have um, a local network that we work with, um, TV57, so that's usually where you'll find us um, there. But the, the best way would just be go to the YouTube, and you can watch at your leisure <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I love it. I love it. Let's spring out our comedians to the show. We're going to go down to Tennessee, start out with our good buddy, June Bug, June Colson. June, what's going on? How are you? Oh. June, your audio's no. not there. I know. I know. Oh, Look, okay. I know. <sighs> I'm telling you. I was- June, too much espresso. I know. I told I told Maurice, I told you that I drank two espressos today and I haven't had coffee in like a week and a half. I have lost my mind. I can't get it together, but I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. It's good that we have amazing yes. people like Amy here and you, Maurice, to just balance out the June bug. Okay. There you so go. You got it. Yeah, we're fine. We're going to be okay. It's great to have you on the show, June. Uh, we're going to go down to Pompano Beach, Florida and bring out our good buddy, and you saw her during the open at one of her New Year's Eve comedy shows. Please welcome Felicia Frazier. What's up, Hello. Fifi? How are you? Hey, guys. I'm doing good. So good to see everybody. Hi, Amy. Hello. Hey, June. Wait, you yeah. have your fancy voice on. I know. Fifi. Look at you. We have a guest. So we have to <laughs> have a guest in the we house. So we'll behave. Right? You know, we, listen, we have to act right when oh, Comfy's here. You know. That's right. We do. We have to act right with you. I'm serious for that about it. Uh, we're going to bring out our next comedian going out to uh, my former stomping grounds in Northern Virginia. Chester, what's going on, bro? Uh, and, and that would be around, uh, well, it's not actually in Woodbridge, but it is in Northern Virginia. Please welcome to the show Don Davis Womack and her husband, Chris. What's up, guys? Woo! Hey, everybody. How's it going? Look at all these beautiful people. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Amy. Well, nice now, to hey. meet you. Hi. Yes. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Now, Don, where are you located in Northern Virginia exactly, specifically? We're not in Northern Virginia. We're in Harrison. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, that would be in West but, Virginia. Right? That's right. But we can get there to Northern Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> We've got cars and everything in our part of Virginia. Oh, man, I love it. That's good stuff. You guys are in the advanced uh, part. Good stuff. All right, good stuff. Uh, Chester Goat says, oh, man, Don, also another one of my faves. Good, Chester. I'm glad we got some faves on the show. 
Uh, we're supposed to be joined by Platinum. I think she's having some technical difficulties, mm -hmm. but Platinum, we're here for you. We're going to be, whatever you get everything together, we're going to be right here, uh, Platinum. So just take your time. Don't worry about it. We are going to dive back into Acts chapter 8 today and 9. Uh, and we have Don's husband, Chris, on the show. And we, we, we got it over the, and just to provide, you know what, before we dive in, by gosh, why don't we just pray? Okay, <laughs> let's just do that before we get rolled. Fifi, how about opening us up in prayer? Sure, no problem. All right. Fifi. All right. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, let's we thank it. you for this time tonight that we have together. We thank you for the gift of your word that you have given us as a guide on this earth. God, we thank you that your word is living and breathing and forever changing our lives on a daily basis, mm -hmm. God. We forever give your name praise for the platforms that you have given us and for the um, reach that you have given us to the world. Bless yes. us that we may continue to bless others. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus Christ's Amen. Name. Amen. All right. I love it. Great opening prayer. So we are going to get back. I wanted to go back to Acts chapter 8. We've been talking about the power of the Holy Spirit as it relates to what we do in entertainment and having faith through tough situations. And the, the, the discussions have gone, you know, in an interesting flow. And one of the subjects, and it's in Acts chapter 8, uh, specifically verses 29 through 37 which I'm going to read in a moment, but it got into, because we're talking about the intentionality of the eunuch uh, as Philip is ordered by the Holy Spirit to approach this horse and carriage. This is the uh, treasurer for the queen of the Candake, I guess, of Ethiopia. And it's an interesting story, and it's the premise of what we're going to talk about today. So let's go, go there. I'll begin reading in Acts chapter 8, beginning... With verse 29, the spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. How can I? He said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before its shearer, is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. This always surprises me because you can preach salvation in the Old Testament. Verse 36, as they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? This man's ready. Verse 38, and he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. Now, this is quite amazing because you're in the desert, but there's water. This is a supernatural event. Mm -hmm. But I want to go back to the eunuch and his zeal. And, and, and he wants to be healed. Every year, and then I'm going to turn this over to you guys. Every year, I go to a men's conference for the past, I don't know, 10 years. There's an, there's an altar call for men struggling with pornography. And they will go down there in waves, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. But after a while, I, I started to notice that the numbers didn't wane. Mm -hmm. there, there, there was no real decrease in this rush to the altar. Mm -hmm. In fact, they were getting bigger, the numbers. Mm -hmm. And I thought, my gosh, what you know, there should be some healing going on here. Number one, all the men should get credit and merit for stepping up and at mm -hmm. least presenting that this is an issue. They deserve ton. Men deserve tons of credit for that. But the other end of it is when, the, why is there no real change coming? Mm -hmm. You know, and that was a question that I had brought up during the past three to four weeks on the show, as we kind of like nipped at this. So we weren't focusing on pornography. It just happened to rise up to become kind of a centerpiece of our discussion. And, mm -hmm. and so I, I'm like, cause you look at the eunuch, 
he he means business. He's like, mm -hmm. yo, man, show me some water. Show me how to get saved. I'm in. <laughs> okay. He was intentional. He was met with the man who was intentional to save and Philip and the, and, and the spirit in verse 39 took Philip away. Like in it, 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 verse 39, when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on rejoicing. So the Lord was like, he's good. Mm -hmm. hey, Philip, he's good. <laughs> Let's go to the next town. Okay, it saves more people. So at the end of the day, there has to be a great intentionality to change. Yes. And so mm -hmm. um, I br we bring on Don's husband today. I, first of all, I want to give uh, Chris a ton of credit for being uh, willing to be transparent today about his own struggle with this subject of pornography. I mean, tons of respect and kudos out to you, Chris, mm -hmm. for agreeing to be on and talk about this. But that that's what has set up the, the background of our show. But before I turn this over to you, Chris, Amy, I'd, I'd like for you to just tell me what your thoughts are on the intentionality to change from your viewpoint as, as a follower of Christ and just watching the landscape of fellow brothers and sisters who are struggling with whatever. Right now, you want me to go ahead? Yes. <laughs> if you <laughs> offer anything at all of this. Okay, so. okay. sure. Um, well, you know, a few things, even as you were just um, reading that through mm -hmm. in Isaiah, it, in my version, it says a little bit, the passage from there, it says it a little bit differently. It says, who will describe his generation? But I believe yeah. yours says, who, um, who can know his descendants? It right, isn't right. ironic that he would be reading that scripture, that if he was a eunuch, not all eunuchs were castrated, but most probably in that day were, but not all. Right. Um, but either way, a, 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 a simple way of saying, hey, I'm not going to produce seed. So and then to me, it's it's not ironic. There's nothing ironic in the Bible. It's all pointed so that yes. the spirit of the Lord would bring um, Philip at that very moment, he's reading this passage and saying, I don't even have understanding of this, but right. he's like, okay, well, let me tell you about the eternal seed, you know, like mm -hmm. in your body, you might not be able to reproduce and maybe subconsciously or somewhere he felt like less of a man. And so here we have God coming in, in this powerful, powerful way to show himself as salvation to this person who is kind of unidentifiable the way that either a woman would bear a child or a man would bear seed and carry his name. And so I feel like that's really powerful. He's speaking to the identity of this man. It goes after the, um, how the Lord goes after the one. He leaves the 99 and he goes for the one. And mm -hmm. like you said, this is the wilderness. Gaza means that that's the desert road. And he finds you in your desert. And he says, come to the waters, all who are thirsty, and you will never thirst again. And so something really, as I was asking the Lord um, about this, especially you initially asked me on, and then you told me the subject matter. And I was like, wow, Lord, that's not my area of expertise, but what would you have me say? Yeah. And so, so within that, um, the Lord really spoke to me about identity. When Adam, you know, was created, his first, his eyes were gazing upon the Lord. That's where he found his identity. And so he's always going through and, and finding us in these places and, and leading us home through identity. And so for the bigger picture, the it, like your to your question, because I have a few things that I, I would like to say, but I don't want to take too much time. But to the bigger picture, um, to answer your question regarding change, um, I, I do think that um you know, we, we just um, time after time, year after year, the longer we let patterns go, the harder it's um, it is to come apart from them. So, mm -hmm. the Lord, you know, doing this awakening in the body in the church over the last few years. Um, and within that, he's trying to remove the mixture, um, even and uh, you know, as you continue to read in Acts, it is during the time period of the Hellenistic Jews and some of the eunuchs of that time. Um, it was actually from serving a, a false god that they actually self castrated themselves. They were the priests then, mm -hmm. and so we have we have a lot of mixture going on. Let's just put it that way. And 
you know, so we carry on these things generation from generation and they're not done. Mm-hmm. And so we yeah. have to go back to the root of it. And that's really um, either the choice of change or not. And if you really want to look at complete transformation and what that means in the Bible, it means metamorphosis. It means completely disintegrating who we are, completely mm-hmm. dying to it, let it dissolve and let, be, totally become a new creation in Christ. That's in, yeah. the exact definition of what a butterfly does, the four stages. <laughs> um right. So anyway, that's really the change. And so, um, and, and one point in that is a mature, um, caterpillar, they know when to stop eating and they go into that crystallisis out of maturity. They know when to stop eating and they know when it's time to die. So really it's a lack of maturity that we don't have the change because we, we don't die, but that's one of the Mm -hmm. first things that we're instructed to do to be Christ-like is to die to ourselves and pick up our cross and follow him. And unfortunately, along with that mixture and the things that we've had over the years and years and years, we have a lack of discipleship and truly training people what it is to be Christ-like and what it means to follow him. And so because of that, we're not seeing these standards upheld and we have compromise within the church. So that's a very broad kind of overview. Yeah. Well, well, you said die, uh, Amy, and I'm, I'm going out on stage for the first time tonight in about seven months, and I'm hoping that doesn't happen to me. Anyway, <laughs> that being said, uh, we are, <laughs> but that being said, <laughs> we're going to switch back over here. And, and Jude and Fifi, I want to get to you guys in just a second, but I want to go, I want to flip this back over to, to Don and Chris. Again, uh, 100% kudos to you, Chris. I love the fact that you're doing this and and you 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 agreed to come on the show and be honest and transparent about about your struggle chris so i i give the floor to you my friend oh man okay well i will try to just uh, i'll just share my story real quick um yeah well as quick as i can um there, there's a lot there so i'm gonna try to stay focused well, it is well let me let me let me let yeah chris let me just help you a little bit out because i don't, I, I, I don't want to put too much pressure on you the fact that you agreed to come on and and talk about it is 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 100 but yeah. it, again it's just an issue that a lot of men have been struggling mm-hmm. with and there just hasn't been any change and the reason that you're here you're actually doing something about it mm-hmm. yeah. you know yeah. you and don are yeah. actually being proactive together yeah. and I, I just wanted you to touch on it uh, just a little bit if you don't mind absolutely um yeah so i mean because my story is really with this issue is a 45 year story um i started mm-hmm. using pornography at the age of about 10 um and it was in and out of my life but most more in than out you know i would yeah. think that I had freedom for it for for a while. And then, you know, no, um, when I was uh, 30, that's when I became saved. And that for, as it is for a lot of people, I had, um, I had freedom from a lot of things, including that, uh, you know, and, um, and that was a life changing thing. And that's also, around when I started dating Dawn and, um, and we got engaged and man, it just, you know, I, I would have told you at that time, you know, free from that and some other negative things in my life. And that was the difference. It was, uh, you know, I needed God and now I got him. And so everything's going to be fantastic from here. And, um, that was true for a bit, but after I want to say about the first year of our marriage, I relapsed and uh, started using pornography again. And then, um, you know, it would, again, sort of be in and out. It would escalate. And then I had a stretch there where um, I had a good group of guys at our church uh, and we were meeting weekly, um, holding each other accountable. That was a great thing, by the way. I highly encourage that. Um, and at, at the same time, I was putting a lot of my energy and focus into um, uh, distance running. And so I was so focused on that. I think a lot of my addictive personality was being poured into that. And um, so that got me like a year stretch of sobriety. And I thought, oh, yeah, man, I don't even want to have any inclination to, to use again. And then 
um, it, it was crazy. The I want to say two days after finishing the Boston Marathon, which is sort of the culmination of a lot of stuff I had worked for, I started using again. And then we moved okay. to we moved um, to where we currently are. So I'm not meeting with these group of guys anymore, and um, my use starts going again. And uh, Don caught me um, twice. Uh, in addition to catching me twice, um, she um, I suggested something really inappropriate with her. Um, and um, and at that point, she said, "Okay, this has gotten out of hand. You need to get help." And so, yeah. My response to that was, I just thought, all right, well, I just need to, uh, at the time I was experiencing a lot of anxiety and depression. I had my entire life and I was yeah. like, oh, I what I need, I need some psych meds. So I went to see a psychiatrist, um, not belittling psychiatry, but they are all too eager to give you psych meds. And so I thought, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I thought, hey man, problem solved. And some for some people that is, that is a big key for me it was not um so i just viewed that as like well i i, I did what she asked i handled it and then um you know, the problem was not solved and then ultimately all this behavior led to me uh starting an affair um about well three years ago um but um was caught a couple of years ago and then um that was i mean i i just look back on it now it was god kind of tapping me on the shoulder gently over the years saying hey man i love you get it together hey man i love you get it to you know i'm, I'm here i can heal you i just need you to yeah. i'm right Amen. all i need you to do is turn around and, right and take right. the help i'm not even asking you to you know because i was still even though i could have given you the proper answers theologically about you know how we rely on god's power not our own and all that good yeah. stuff mm -hmm. i passed the sunday school test but um but i i didn't um i wasn't approaching it with that aspect of my life i was like oh man i am i am a filthy backslider and i got to get this right before i can get back to my good place that i had with god when i was first saved and um right. yes sir so this was kind of like god finally saying all right i know what it's going to take and it breaks my heart but here you go and um dawn caught me and um man uh that was like somebody it was like waking up and a bomb had just gone off all around me and then looking down and I had the controller to the bomb and realizing I set the bomb off. You know, it's right. just, it, it was just like I was in a, just a, I was, a, I was a walking dead for so long. It was just like realizing what I had done. Um, and then, I mean, I could talk for the rest of the program on everything that's happened over the last two years, but suffice it to say, Dawn laid down some really serious boundaries. She was not, you know, she 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 did not, and and still, to a large extent, is not saying like, okay, I take you back unconditionally. I love you. You know, here we go. She was, she laid down some very specific boundaries. Um, yeah. And because of those, and there there they all of them were amazingly key to my recovery. Um, they the boundaries um, helped me to number one realize that I I, I am a sex addict, um, which you know I would include. Well, I, it's not my personal view, but pornography addiction is part of sex addiction. Yes, um, it is. And people oftentimes think of sex addiction and they think of you know, you know Tiger Woods having a hundred mistresses, you know, or something like that, and it. it it can be solely porn addiction too. So, um, but anyway, um, so just understanding that I was, um, boundaries also, she felt like for her safety, I needed to cut, get to the root cause of why I was doing this in the first place. And, yeah. um, that journey through, um, you know, therapy, um, and, um, uh, going 
going through a 12 step program um, and having, having other men in my life I could be transparent with. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, by the way, Maurice, you congratulated me for my vulnerability. You did not tell me I'd be talking to four women. That's why I can, hey, Chris, that's why I congratulated you, man. Come on, dude. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's a certified problem, so it's no problem for me to talk about it to my sisters either. Um, but um, yeah. anyway, um, so um, getting to that root cause, um, uh, I shared a little bit of my story with you, Maurice, you know, uh, earlier in the week. And, um, you know, one of the things I told you and I tell everybody is one of the things I realized in the process is healing from this involves not only setting up external barriers, you know, I liken, you know, uh, pornography of use and abuse is falling off a cliff. Well, you need to set up as many guardrails as possible to get you nowhere near that cliff. But then yeah. sort of yeah. to Amy's earlier point, you have to, you have to be willing and open to God for, to have God perform that internal transformation so that you're not even interested in even getting near the guardrails. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it is an internal and external. And I think a lot of times what we do in the church, if I could just, um, you know, overgeneralize is we focus on the external guardrails. Like, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of guys will be like, Hey man, why don't you be my accountability partner? You know, or, 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 Hey, I'm going to put this blocker on my computer. And all those are great things, by the way. Those are things I have. Those are part of my guardrails. But that, you're an addicted brain will figure out a way around guardrails. Mm -hmm. You know, you can jump over guardrails and get to that cliff if you want to. Um, yeah. You know, guardrails are effective on the highway because none of us want to drive off the highway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, and they're only true. there on the rare, ch rare, you know, time where, where we might veer off. But um, so over them. <laughs> yeah. That's right. yeah. The, the, the big part is that internal transformation um, that uh, Amy talked about, and that's what's so different this time. Um, mm -hmm. it is, uh, it, I can't even really put into words how different it is when you go through the internal transformation versus just, Hey man, I, I made it a year without doing this thing that I still really want to do. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's the biggest difference. And, and, um, you know, it reminds me of, uh, I always think about when, you know, Jesus said, repeat, repent, the kingdom of God is here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Greek word for that, which I think is pronounced metanoia, is a is a complete change of mind. It's not, you know, it's not repent like, hey, quit doing bad stuff. The kingdom of God is here. It's like change. Change your mind. You know? Yeah. Like yeah. Amy was saying, you know, have that metamorphosis. The kingdom of God is here. And mm -hmm. that yeah. makes it possible. And that is a little abbreviated story and Don can maybe fill in a hole or two if she wants to, but that's that's the overall thing. And thank you ladies so much for, for listening. Yeah. Well let me let, let me <laughs> let me say this because you mentioned earlier uh Chris that God loves you and, and let me tell you mm -hmm. something he loves you mm -hmm. and tell you something proof that God loves you is the fact that Don is sitting there right beside you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Man. That that that's that's evidence that God loves you, bro, and He does. And 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 as yeah. you are you're dealing. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I I don't want to fail to bring uh, your attention to our next comedian that's on the show, Platinum Mary Franklin. Ooh, one of my favorites. Hi, Platinum. Yeah. One of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, you got you got to love Platinum. I I met Platinum about oh my gosh, what was it about? Maybe heck, <laughs> eight years ago. You had it. You had opened this. A comedy okay. show and I made sure to be there but and I, I've been friends with Platinum ever since but uh, yeah I, I just wanted to uh, introduce you and Platinum is a lot of people in the Christian comedy community know who Platinum is mm -hmm. know much about it. Uh, but I want to say that Chris look God loves you I mean I always say that about my own wife you know my, I, I don't deserve her but mm -hmm. God is telling me he loves me because she's with me Amen. I always say it 
and 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 God loves you, man. I mean, you got these these um, certain uh, stipulations and so forth that you have, that that's something God would do. I love you, but this is what's going to have to happen to get you home, if you will. And and so yeah. Anyway, I I just wanted to to platinum. Is there anything you'd like to to add to to what Chris's story has has brought out? Uh, it takes courage, you know. And I think that's how he frees himself up and continue to free yourself up, you know, because you don't have any secrets. You no know, secrets mm-hmm. tend to oh, hurt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Make you feel ashamed, but you know, mm-hmm. when we confess oh, yeah. that thing. And like you said, God loves you because, you know, I believe sometimes when we share certain of our testimony, and we want to, why am I telling all these people I don't know? You know. Mm-hmm. What I mean? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so you know it's God and you know it's freeing you. So the devil has he, he'll never have that strong hold on you. That's right. That's you right. know what I mean? You can't shame me because I'm telling my own story. Yeah. So it's yeah. about telling your own story. Like I said, we're human is nothing to be ashamed of. You know, we all got, you know, as, as I told my girlfriend one day, I said the words say we all our all our righteousness is as filthy rags. So yes. 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 Yeah. that's right. He says, yeah. No, not one. And yeah. so mm-hmm. I would just say, you know, continue to be strong, continue, like I said, to work on it. Cause I'm quite sure, you know, when like Paul had that thorn in his side, just when we think we arrived, we really haven't. So, you know, yeah. continue yeah. to work on it, continue yeah. to pray on it, continue to share with your wife. Your wife's gonna, you know, as y'all pray about this thing, you know, mm-hmm. that you know, you're delivered. But like you said, it, Stuff can happen, so yeah, I'm praying you stay strong, <laughs> amen. amen. And and Don, I don't know if you ever had a chance to go out and get the numbers of young people that are addicted right. to pornography because I think th- those numbers are mm-hmm. far beyond men, which is really scary, mm-hmm. um, I did. And- yeah. And you know, uh, not some of you may not know this, but my, um, well, a lot of you may not know this because it's a bunch of strangers, but my son ruptured his knee and ripped his patella yes. completely yes. off his knee. And so we are actually in North Carolina tending to him Ooh. and surgery was yesterday. So okay. I did do some digging into the statistics and quite frankly, the, the large and short of it is there's a ton of, of information out there that shows how staggering this corner of craft, you know, addiction is and this problem is and how pervasive it is today that I was having trouble to come up with just a short summary mm. of to present mm. on this show today. That's literally how overwhelming it is. But some things to know is that children as young as eight are exposed to pornography because of the internet. Um, yeah. yeah. That college age students are struggling with erectile dysfunction because of their pornography use. Absolutely. Um, the young people today are looking at pornography for sex education and what to do. Mm-hmm. Um, there wow. is a 95% failure rate once you're involved with this. So you need to actually have professional help you know, in yeah. addition to your spiritual support to be able to set those guardrails and help you navigate while God is working in you to yeah. do the transformation. There is basically triage that needs to happen and it needs to come from a uh, professional support to do that. Uh, yeah. There's yeah. what eight over 80% of the men are, have either used or currently using pornography or thereabouts and, and and women addicted to pornography is on the rise i think it's around 37 percent or somewhere like that as well. yeah yeah red well, so those are general good. statistics but you can you google you know fight the drug or go to covenant oh, uh, fight the new drug or covenant eyes and there are literally pages and pages and pages of statistics about this. Um, I just want to add something real quick to what Don was saying about young kids getting exposed to really hard, you know, explicit stuff early. Um, a therapist that I've worked with told me that um, men of my era, it's usually some sort of childhood trauma that made vulnerable mm-hmm. pornography, right? 
Yeah. And nowadays, the exposure is the tra childhood trauma. Because you know, the little eyes are not supposed to see, well, none of us are supposed to see that stuff, but, you know, little eyes, especially when it's especially traumatic. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. Just the exposure from their friends could hook them because that in itself is traumatic. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, and all, I'm sorry, go ahead, Don. I just wanted another piece of, of this that I, you know, I've gotten a lot of education about this topic in the last couple of years. Friends. More than you want to. <laughs> More than I No. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> but there is a dopamine release that happens in the brain from seeing the graphic image. So yeah. what happens is it takes uh, more intense graphic images to get the same amount of dopamine release. Right. So that's why it snowballs and escalates without intervention and help. Mm -hmm. And it took, it was a big wake up call for him when I caught him and walked out and moved in mm -hmm. with a friend of mine for several weeks mm -hmm. and then worked with my therapist on creating boundaries that would establish safety uh, to basically hold him accountable and, and present to him, I think you have a problem. And his first yeah. response honestly was, no, I, I don't yeah. have a problem. All men are doing this. And I said, yeah. well, I'm not, I'm not married to those men. I'm married to you. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and I do remember the first time that, you know, he, he asked me to meet him at a restaurant. I gave him one hour. Um, and I had a list of things I was going to address with him. And the first one was to present that I think he has a problem. And he said that. And, you know, I said, I don't know who told you all these lies Mm. about mm -hmm. but you are better than that mm -hmm. and yeah. god has something else for you but i can't make that decision for you you have to make it for yourself That's and right, yes. it has to be a complete transformation and you need to allow him to do that or we can't be so yeah, you just yeah. well I'll, I'll say this too ben and, and i mentioned this when we talked last week i think when when a, an addiction occurs there comes a point where you get up to a checkpoint where yes. you're like okay all right i'm i'm tripping i'm yes. i'm really tripping and i got i gotta stop this this is just bad now if you get through that checkpoint and you keep going past that you've gone down a rabbit Ooh. hole Ooh. that's bad <laughs> it's just i mean i'm telling you right now you've gone down a rabbit hole dude and it is a wrap i hate to say that but that's the reality as you accurately stated don about young people they say that you know but most of these kids are exposed to pornography through these cell phones before mm -hmm. they're nine ten years old and when it happens they're hooked forever that's what the numbers say you alluded to that when you said 95 percent that they're never turning back you know, they, 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 yeah they're never turning back and 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 I think as adults in our society, you know, a lot of that onus is on us in as far as the presentation of phones. But I want to ask you, June and and Fifi, in, in relation to the phone, have you ever had any stipulations, June, as far as how you were going to deal with cell phones with your kids? Oh yeah. Oh gosh, yeah. Um, you know, my kids now are adults, and. Um, you do what you can to, you know, to teach them and well, yeah. talk to them and monitor them. Um, but again, I, I think it's Chris that said, you know, addiction finds a way they, it finds the way around it. And it is such a, uh, as Chris said, it's, you know, all men are doing this, you know, it's this, we live in a society that normalizes it, that um, glorifies it, that makes the odd people out who aren't into pornography right um I, I you know i will tell you i grew up i grew up my dad has always been addicted to pornography mm. to this okay. day he's still predicted you know addicted to pornography when i was a kid there was pornographic cartoons being played in the vhs player right like uh you know it's not new to uh, be exposed to things that they shouldn't be right yeah. and yeah. you know fortunately just because of god that is not an addiction 
that I ever had. I literally lived just a few doors down from a strip club when I was a kid. And I saw the dancers going in and out. And, you know, uh, my mom would go to the club with my dad. Right. So uh, I am I am no um, pornography and, and due to a family and all of that. It's it's no mystery to me. But but the scary part is that we do live in a society where the people who aren't partaking are abnormal. And then the people who are Christians who find themselves in this situation, it has been given such a label of shame and silence mm -hmm. and, and, and quietness that relationships and couples like, you know, Donna Chris speak up who's going to, and the devil loves silence and he loves people to think they're alone and that nobody else has ever dealt with this and, and shame will hold you down. And, and uh, you know, uh, I think someone said earlier, you've got to be willing to die to this. The, the metamorphosis, I think it was Amy who said that. And I was do, you know reading today and, and noticing Saul, Paul, there was divine contact. There was divine conviction. There was divine conversion. Yeah. And to go back to what you said at the beginning, you have these men who go down and they're mm -hmm. convicted. Mm hmm there's not a conversion. It makes right. me think of like every right. time I went to church camp and I would leave the low income housing, government housing, the pornography house, the drugs, the this, the that, everything that was going on around me, I would go and I would be hype. And I would be like, I don't want to be like this. And I want to stop cussing and I want to do this and that, and whatever. And then I was sent right back to where I came from with all of the things still around me. And I think that's what a lot of men deal with too. Is that they get, they're, they're in a safe space and they can talk about it here and with, amongst these people. But um, I, I was talking to Michelle Van Dusen today. I said, there, there are men that if they admit it, they can lose their job. Mm -hmm. They literally are, are frightened to death by what they could lose. And the devil uses that to hide what they could gain. Yeah. You know? And, and so I think a lot of that is they have the divine contact and they get that conviction, but there's not the, the death to them, you know, to dying to themselves and to their flesh and right. that conversion doesn't happen. And sometimes it takes losing your wife. Sometimes it takes the ultimate. I love how Chris described it where God's like, nudge, hey, hey. And, we, and when we saw him do it in the Old Testament and then finally he's like, and a plague, you know, and yeah. enough. Like I yeah. will get your attention. I, you, I love you enough to strip away everything that you hold dear so that you look at yeah. me. Amazing. Look at me. So, yeah. so yeah. A a anyway, that you know, and then after the conversion was the divine communion. You know, like I mean, what did Saul say? He said, "Who are you, Lord?" Right. He went from not just persecuting but executing Christians and denying God to calling him Lord. You know, there was this divine conversion, and then the communion with God and walking with Him, and and I think we just. At the altar, it stops at the conviction sometimes. And then June, you go back like, home and you yeah. don't have that support and you can't freely speak and you feel alone and the devil just, just gets right back in there. Well, that's how awesome God is. It's like, I don't know you, but I know you. <laughs> but <laughs> yes. but, but, but here's the beauty, you. though. Here's the beauty because <laughs> okay. we talk about, and, and then I'll hush, but here's the beauty. We talk about all of this. We do yeah. talk about all of this, right? And and, yeah. and and it's all negative, negative, negative. But we serve a God that nothing is impossible, yeah. right? Uh, it, it's not impossible for a man to break this addiction. It is not impossible for a woman to break this addiction. It is not right. impossible for a woman to look at her husband at the foot of the cross, right? right. The same place that she is and to be able to heal and love and respect and look at that man for who God created him to be and not for the mistakes and the things that he's been through. And I, I just praise God that we serve a God that this is not impossible for him. Yeah, it's it, not it, is impossible. Not, it is not impossible. And I, I want to throw it to you, Fifi, because I know you do have young ones that are coming along. How, how do you regulate cell phone usage with your kids? Right now, well, my son is seven um, and he is into a lot of um, uh, ABCs and numbers. <laughs> so 
So the biggest problem I have is sometimes he he'll watch YouTube, which I've been I'm trying to get him away from the YouTube. Like, yeah, I caught yeah. him on the on my uh, on my smart TV the other day trying to create a new profile so he can get to YouTube because I block YouTube on his oh, profile. Wow. Oh wow! Oh wow! Like the the child is he's advanced. Like I was so. Because on YouTube, they have where people have created these alphabet programs, but they're for adults. So he'll be yep. watching them and they're talking about and doing things that have nothing to do with what kids should be watching. And I'm like, what is that? Why is letter D uh, taking his shorts off? What is going on? It's just ridiculous mm -hmm. stuff that, that people post on YouTube. So yeah. I've had to, even at seven, started restricting the things that he can do and what he can watch. And I say, okay, you can watch, you know, you can watch Disney Plus, you know, or you can watch this. And I have to, I'm constantly walking in and out of the room, making sure what he's watching is what he's supposed to be watching. It's it's really, really intense. Um, but I wanted to also speak to the point. I loved um, what everybody said. And I love the fact that God is who he is because he just be orchestrating things. The yes. way Amy yes. opened up the show, yeah. it was like, Today, I was talking to my husband and I was talking about some of the same things that we're talking about tonight. And yeah. I didn't even tell him what the topic of our discussion was tonight. Okay. Um, but the idea of the identity, I want to speak to that for a couple of seconds if I could. Oh, yeah, um, sure. And how Amy was talking about us having our identity with Christ. I yeah. think when we experience trauma and when we experience those we get exposed to things too early or we have experiences that cause us to be angry or we have these things that happen to us before we're able to put words to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It becomes a part of what we call our identity. And that in itself affects how we make choices because now I've identified myself with this default that was not created to be a part of who I am. So yes. if someone comes yes. to me and they say, this is something like how Don was saying, this is something that you don't have to identify with. This isn't something that you have to believe is true about yourself. Mm -hmm. But for on the other end, you're like, but wait, this has been me since I was eight. What do you mean? This is a part of who I am. And yeah. all of us have these moments in these parts mm -hmm. of us that we have to literally die to. We it hurts yeah. like yeah. we are taking parts of our body away from us because it has created a comfort for us for so long that I've identified with it. And any other thing will feel unnatural to me. Because yeah. that's yeah. the yeah. way yeah, that I've I've cured this moment for me since I was eight. This is the way I felt better in these moments since I was 12. This is a part of who I am when it's not actually supposed to be. Yeah, um, correct, correct. I was reading Psalms chapter 37, verse four. It says, delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Verse five says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. I always find it funny that people love to quote the scripture that says, Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And they never go to that next scripture where it says, <laughs> commit thy way unto the Lord. That's mm -hmm. the part where Amy and June and Dawn and all of us are talking about when we have to make a choice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Commitment yes. is a choice that you make. And a lot of times we don't believe that there is restoration after we make mm -hmm. bad choices. But that's a trick of the enemy. Sometimes right. the restoration doesn't come the way we want it to, but restoration is always possible if you commit your way unto the Lord. Okay, I'm done. I love it. I love it. And I, you know, I was I was talking to, and it and it was a great uh, open to the show, Amy. It was great. That was a great breakdown on your part. But I, I think that, and I was telling Don and Chris last week because I had I had a huge problem with marijuana as a a young 20, 21 year old, and it was it was a so bad. My parents had to put me in a thirty day detox. It was really bad. I mean, it was really really bad. And I got in the program, and I said 
everything they wanted me to say. Like, I just want to chuck this deuce and get out of here. <laughs> and so I did. Oh, yeah. Doc, you're, well, Doc, you're not wrong. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and so once I got out, I, I had four weeks of outpatient. And my buddies showed up and they had all this marijuana. And wow. I'm like, oh, my gosh, dude. I can't because they, ch they take my blood every week. Long story short, when it was over, I and I'm clean and sober. I thought about the person I was for some reason when I was under. And I said, oh my gosh. I, I don't want ever, I don't want to ever be that person again. Mm -hmm. 35 years I've been free from it. Wow, amen. Amen. You know what I mean? It, it's like there, there's got to there's got to come a moment, and and but I wasn't saved at the time, but God created a space for me to think. It was still Him, even though I didn't know Him yet. He knew me, mm -hmm. and it's like you just think about that because that person, when you're under, that's not who you are. Mm -mm. You know who you are. That's mm -hmm. right. And, and when you start to realize that you're something else that's scary, it's like you're a monster. <laughs> you know, and I, I just said, you know, I, I'm done. I'm done. Mm -hmm. And so, so sometimes you just have to have a cold, hard look at your, 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 your infraction, your sin, uh, wh however you want to term it. You have and to face yourself. You have to face yourself, Fifi, Absolutely. exactly. You know, and I and I think that Don, you've presented a space for Chris to do that. Yes. You you've presented a because he loves you. He can't think mm -hmm. of life without you. So you created a space for him to to face himself. And and and, and it makes all the difference. You know, God, God's yeah. working. Go ahead, Don. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I did, and I just want to say for spouses out there whose whose husbands or wives may be struggling with this, yeah, creating that space is a very challenging, and um, and it's hard. Yeah, it's very hard, and that's where um, support and connection with others is uh, priceless. To yes. help walk through that um, journey with you, because it it takes that uh, to be able to do it. You cannot do it alone. Um, and there's space too to talk about what you just said, Maurice, and what June said also. In that, how the enemy uh, wants us to uh, be silent to speak to what June mm -hmm. said. Yeah, because it keeps it keeps that support away and that connection away that you truly, truly need uh, to be yeah. able to walk this walk through this a valley of death, basically. That's, that's right. That's um, right. You don't want to do it alone. And and you talked about uh, I think it was June earlier that you think of the judgment that you're going to get or what you might lose. Um, and to your point, uh, Maurice, when that happens, create space. Just this morning, yeah. we woke up. Chris was uh, Chris was having some hesitation about coming on an online show that could be anyone could see. You know, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, we kind of talked about that and and created some space to talk about that. And we just recently saw Terry Crews. He's an actor who's come yeah. forward with his struggle with pornography and him and oh, his wow. wife walked through okay. the valley of death with this and she wow. laid down strong boundaries too you can google yeah. it and see his wow. interview with okay. dr phil um and so we were able to like look at that and and take ourselves out of our own situation and 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 see how we felt when someone else was vulnerable not yeah. enough to share their story and struggle, we didn't have any uh, ill will or judgment. If anything, we were like, wow, that's amazing that they shared that and how much hope that really gives. Yeah. 
And so all the fears that we were having when we created space and allowed God to just be there Mm -hmm. with us in our fears, we could look at other examples and think about how we look at them and it, and it helped us have the strength to be on here tonight. Mm. Well, 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 amen. And God bless you once again, Chris, for being, you know, willing to be transparent and talk about what you're struggling with and you're going to make it and our prayers are with you. You've got your number one fan right beside you to make sure that you Mm -hmm. get successfully. Mm -hmm. So, uh, God bless you, man, for coming up. God's going to bless you too for, for being willing to talk about it openly. Don't worry about what other people think you're helping people. Yes. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You're helping others that are dealing with the same thing, man. You're not by yourself, Chris. Um, (laughs) look, we're going to have to wrap it up. I hate having to do this because we could go on and on. I love these discussions, but we do Mm -hmm. have to break out. I'd love to go around and see what you guys are up to, but we got to get out of here very soon. But if you enjoyed it and you really thought this was a cool show, hey, like it and share it and subscribe to the Maurice Brown Comedy Channel, as well as any social media engine that Amy Sutherland or June Colson or Platinum or Don Davis Womack and Chris and Fifi Felicia Frazier are a part of. And if you missed it, watch the replay on Facebook or YouTube. And what's that, Platinum? Yes. I love you, Platinum. (laughs) Yeah. You got it. Listen, you guys got to follow Platinum as well because she's Mm -hmm. got a lot going on. Are you still Mm -hmm. in uh, the uh, Maryland area, Platinum? Uh, Yeah. Matter of fact, I done something uh, back in December with uh, Don and uh, Chris. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did. (laughs) I love it. I love it. You you guys can follow (laughs) Platinum on Instagram and and find out what she's up to. And uh, also, you can watch the show on the replay on the Creative Motion Network as well Mm. on Roku TV and every Saturday night in Albuquerque, New Mexico on KCHF TV at 12 a.m. and 8 p.m. And we're heard where all major podcasts are heard. You can check us out on Spotify, Audible, all that stuff. You guys know the deal. This has been a great show. We will see you uh, guys hopefully in the near future. Most importantly, may the peace of Jesus Christ be with you and your families. God bless you. Mm-hmm. Oh.